So welcome back. Now let's model the brushes here. And for this we make a box modeling approach in this lesson. So let's take a box here, place it. And I dive into the box here and suddenly everything is gone. Why? Because I have really often deactivated here the other objects. So you only see the nodes which are inside of the container where you are. I want to see this time my image planes so I can ghost them or show them all. So ghosting means that you get a ghost here or because only the image planes are visible on the top level. I can also show them all here. Okay. Next step would be now I select the box. I take the handle tool here and I block now here my toothbrush out. So first space bar two, I go here to the top. To see through the brush, I press the W key on my keyboard to go here to wireframe with ghosts. And then I move now here these handles. If you want to move them proportionally, you can hold down the shift key. But in my case, I don't want to do it for the top and the end. But now at the sides, I hold down now my shift key to bring them here around the brush itself. I think everything is in here. Yeah, a little bit out. Yeah, that's it. And then we switch here to space buff four to our right view. And here you see a little bit better where this brush ends. So I move this in without holding shift. So I don't want to change the end here. It should stay. And then I move this here without holding shift down. And this here without holding shift up. So that's it. Now we have blocked out the whole thing. And one thing which I want to do now is this here is rounded later. I think you see it better here in this image. You see this here is rounded. And what I want to do is I want to bevel this later. So I bring this in a little bit until this point here. And do, 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 do. yeah, same here. So. I think this here is something I want later to extend. After we've done now this here, we can start now setting cuts here. And for this, I think that my image planes are a little bit in the way. So you remembered I said that I removed all the pre transforms here. So everything is zero here or one for the scale. And that's now my big advantage. I can now go here to the top plane. I select it here and I then go to translate and move it a little bit down. So minus 0.1, for example. So I bring it down here. So it's in the back. So if you now look with space part two from the top, you still have, because this is an autographic view, the same perspective. So everything is still the same, but it's not in your way anymore. And the same thing I want to do with the side image, I will have to move it into this direction. So let's try the same here, not negative this time, positive. Yeah, that's it. I save again so that we don't lose anything. If something happens, I can get rid here of the grid. It's a little bit annoying in the moment. And then I want to have here segments or cuts. So let's go back to the box. And to have a whole bunch of cuts, we can use the poly split node. You can reach them by changing your radial menu here to poly modeling, press the C key. Here you have all your polygon modeling tools now and you can use poly split here. But poly split here in the radial menu is setting a cut separately. If you want to have a whole bunch of loops, edge loops, what we want, we have to use edge loop here. It's the same node, it's poly split, but yeah. This is the difference between these two entries or items in the radial menu. So we go here and say edge loop. We have a poly split node here now. And normally you move now here to the point where you want to cut. But what I want to do is I want directly to have a bunch of loops. So I say, for example, I want to have 12 loops here. And if you now go over your object and click once, you get your 12 loops here on the whole object here. So that's a thing you can do here. And then I go now here into the top view and start with edit nodes to now shape this form a little bit more. So 
To get this, I switch here to the select tool. I go to the points here. Remember that we have two points here underneath each other. So make sure that you don't have select visible only active. It has to be inactive. And then I run through and start doing that. And now you see it's not perfectly aligned. So you do it now by eye and I orient myself here on the right side. So I select these two, which are four points. You can check this here under the eye. So if you hold down your mouse here, you see four points are selected. And then you use here your tools, scale is E, and then you can start scaling it. And I scale it only in one direction in X because the brush is not really perfectly rounded. So yeah, then I deactivated my secure selection, what means that I now can select directly with my scale tool, the next points. If your secure selection is on, you are not able to deselect with this tool active and select something else. So this time I deactivate this because I think that's more convenient for me. Let's do our job here and bring the form. Yeah, this was my reference at the start. So So this is the shape from the top. I think not so bad, not so bad. I go is space four now in the side view. And now I have to do the same thing, but this time I move stuff. So I select this here. I take here my translate tool. And now we see that the direction here is not right. So you can rotate your widget in two ways. You can use your right mouse button and go here to align handle. And here you see different handle orientations. In the moment it's in component mode. That means it takes the average direction of all the selected components, in our case points, and aligns the handle in this direction, which doesn't make sense here for our alignment here. So you have to switch it to the world. And you see the keyboard shortcut for all of these options here is M. And this is a toggle. Every time you press M, you run through all the different alignments. And so I go now through until I find what I want. So I take now these points here down and then we select these here, bring them up. Yeah, and it's now the same process like before. I try to find a nice shape here. And yeah, now a reference is only really an idea. You can play with that a little bit to find something which you like. Okay, now we are through. Let's check it here in the 3D view. I press W to see it now as a filled object. I think not so bad. We can later test this with a subdivision on it, but now we need the end. So S and then we need here four or clicking here to have this polygon here. And now we want to extrude this. So press the C key, poly extrude. I bring it out a little bit, switch here to the top view, W on something like that here maybe. And then we can bring this together. This is named insert. So let's move this first here and then I insert it a little bit here in so that it matches here this maybe something like that here yeah and if you now see that here you can say okay from the side here let's go here and if you press space f you frame the selected area which is here we can now go again to the points and press the t key to move these points a little bit 
here in an area where you want to have them. Space bar two for the top view. I think they are a little bit too in, so I select now all four of them. So this, then I go to scale and only scale now in the x axis. That's it. Let's go to the other side, same thing. So spacebar one, spacebar H for seeing everything, S4 for polygons, select this polygon here again, C key for poly extrude, bring it out. Go here to the top view, we can now insert it again. Yeah, so like this, bring it a little bit more to the front. Yeah, and then I can now go to points mode. I think these are a little bit too wide out, so yeah. Maybe we make here another cut in a moment. So let's do that here first. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look here, yeah. And then we bring these here up and these here down. Let's mark these two. If we bring them here. Can bring them in. And like I've said, we have now here the problem that this here is really long and we don't really get the right area. So what I do is I take now this time an edge loop again. I hover over this edge, click here to get a new edge. And then we can make our final adjustments here. Yeah, I think that's it. After we have now done all of that here, we want to test the whole thing. So to test this here, we can use the plus on our keyboard. Plus activates on the container subdivision surfaces. And you see now it shrinks together a lot and it's really blobby. The reason for this is that we have really few polygons here in this area and it's too round for my taste because we have form. So shift minus again to deactivate that. If this doesn't work, look back to the banana project there. I talked about changing your keyboard settings if needed. So what we want is more sharp edges here. So let's take a poly bevel this time. Shift enter. And if we now start beveling, you see that our whole toothbrush is now beveled, which increases the poly count, yes but brings the problem that we also have here cuts inside of the brush, which I don't like too much. I only want to have them here on the outside. To prevent that, there's a really cool option inside of the poly bevel and it's a little bit hidden. You see that we have here exclusions and if you open this up, you can ignore the flat edges. And if you do so, you see some of these bevels here are vanishing. And here you have an angle which Houdini uses to define what is flat. And now you can go in here and bring this angle a little bit up until you see exactly only the edges beveled which you like. And this is something you have to really close look here that you don't over look something yeah and i give it a little bit more angle so that i really don't miss anything and i think that's good and now we can press the plus sign on your, our keyboard and now you see we hold more this shape here inside of the cage if you want you can now change the distance a little bit i go in here and make it a little bit smaller or bigger so it really depends how round you want to have now here the outside of the brush yeah and i think i'm happy with that so now we have beveled everything don't forget your normals 
So normals again by face area. I take 89 and then we test it later and then we make our first null here and say this is our brush. Make it black. C key again to add and remove the color swatches. Go out here and now we can look over that. That's now the shape and if you now press shift W to remove the cage you can now see if you go here into shaded view that's now our form we've created and I'm really happy with that and we can now go in here and make it here a little bit more beefy if you like but I don't think that I would do that now I think I'm happy and yeah we see each other in the next lesson.